right, Joe Antonacci here from uh, Team Palooka and the Joe Palooka comic book with Phil Ross. Phil, how are you? Great, Good Joe. Yourself? You. Always a pleasure. Always you're, a pleasure. Are you bro. ready for 142? Oh, yeah, we're ready. We're All definitely right. ready. Phil uh, Ross uh, wearing uh, three hats, right? We're in his, uh, we're in his uh, school, <laughs> right? His martial arts school, right? American Eagle, where you're also uh, the Kettlebell King. Yes. Okay. It's also on Twitter, Kettlebell King. There you go, <laughs> Kettlebell King. We're going to try and get all your tags. So we'll throw them underneath uh, when, we, uh, when we edit this, uh, this interview. But, Phil, I want to talk to you about a couple of things. I want to talk to you about uh, UFC 142. Mm -hmm. Once again, you're going to be in the corner of a fighter, one of our, our own here, both from Team Palooka and from Newark, Jersey, yes. Mike Basentia. Talk to us about Mike's preparation, a lot of which has happened right here sure. in your uh, training facility. Yeah. I'm uh, one of the cogs in the wheel of Mike Masenzio's training. Uh, mm -hmm. I do Mike's strength and conditioning. So, you know, we do uh, circuit training, uh, we run hills, we mm -hmm. do sprints, we do uh, you know everything to get right. that endurance up and work on his explosive power and strength. And I'll tell sure. you, the guy looks, he's in fantastic shape, he's in the best shape of his life. Right. I thought he was in good shape for the Cantwell fight. Right. He looks even better now. Well, yeah. You know, when, you, uh, when you, you have to see the devil in your training, and you mm -hmm. can see the devil in your training when you're doing your strength and conditioning without risking injury. Where you, know, you could get injured if you're going live real hard all the time with right. people and see the so you take there. The, so you take the guy into deep water. Yes. Let him know what it feels like. So the when the lungs are burning. Yes. And the, the arms are don't want it. And the brain says stop. And the heart says go. Yep. Keep going. Yes. They've been there before. Yes. And so, mm -hmm. You know he also does his uh, uh, jujitsu with Paul, Paul Carnicella, mm -hmm. and, uh, and he also does his uh, boxing with Dwight Fleming. Okay. So that's he's working on all these skills. All here in Jersey, right? So yes, yeah, so we, right? we have a lot of executives that come down here and train. Uh, you know, we have attorneys, we have mm -hmm. uh, doctors, especially you know you have surgeons who sit there for hours. Sure. I mean, these guys sometimes there for eight, ten hours, hunched over a microscope. You've seen the blue comic book. What they're going to see and how realistic it is. Well, uh, you know, I, I work at I work a lot with uh, Mike Bullock who does the the writing, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Mike will come with come to me and say, hey, look, this is what we kind of want to happen in the fight. Mm -hmm. How would this actually go down? You know, what, what would be the, the correct move sequence? Because, you know, in order to make it realistic, mm -hmm. as actually was commented on the UFC magazine, right. they said that our fights are realistic and how mm -hmm. we get it that way. You know, you want to look at the fight, say what move is going to work, and then lead to the next one. And you have to get those transitions right. And you have to do something that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so you know when you're when you're on the bottom and you're scooped to the side and you get a Kimura, mm -hmm. okay, what's going to happen? How's the guy going to get out of that? Right. Um, and what would be the next move? And you know what type of kicks? What would be a a, a striking sequence on your feet that would mm -hmm. that would be appropriate? You know, you do a cut right. kick and come over the top of the hook. And it's interesting because when Phil and I were watching 141 a week ago mm -hmm. uh, together. Uh, more than once we said, hey, that's the exact <laughs> sequence that we used in Palooka number five. Or, you know, that's, remember when I told you that's how the guy would escape from the bottom in uh, Palooka number three. So it's, it's interesting <laughs> that, uh, you know, all these things, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. But by the same token, we wanted to make sure, and you, you helped us make sure. So what is your background? Tell me, tell our fans, you know, who this MMA consultant, until they actually open up a comic book, and it says uh, <coughs> Phil Ross with your, with your resume underneath your name. <laughs> tell us, you know, you're, you're not some kid off the street. You, you've been around this business a little while. So talk yeah. to us about your background. Sure. Actually, uh, you know, I've been in the martial arts for, the combat arts for over 35 years. Um, you know, I've had the great pleasure of working with some top guys. Um, you know, I trained with Frank Shamrock, mm -hmm. an instructor in his system. Um, I was a wrestler. I wrestled uh, Division I at the University of Maryland. Um, I was a, obviously a high school wrestler, wrestled mm -hmm. in junior high, and uh, also did quite a bit of Greco-Roman wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, obviously trained in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Sure. Um, I do all my, uh, got my Muay Thai background from Bondo, which okay. is the Burmese art, mm -hmm. and I trained with uh, uh, Pat Finley and John Collins were my instructors mm -hmm. in the Bondo Association. You got some Taekwondo, I got, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously. Actually, yes, yeah, quite actually, a bit. yeah I, I competed in Taekwondo, did pretty well. I, right. I you know, on a competitive, uh, you know, amateur competitive sure. level, right. I uh, placed or won nationals in free fighting, the, the kickboxing, right. uh, Taekwondo, mm -hmm. Greco Roman. And uh, submission fighting. But you can actually see the movements that are realistic and legitimate being thrown, mm -hmm. uh, you know, between the two opponents. Right. And we're also going to throw in in Palooka uh, comic book as a, as an added bonus some uh, pages of instruction from Phil, uh, not specifically in, in mixed martial arts, but 
uh, talking about nutrition, talking about kettlebells. Kettlebell which, training. You know, talk to me about kettlebell. What role does kettlebell play and kettlebell training play in getting someone who wants to fight or wants to sure. do some fighting at all? Okay, well, if you look at it, uh, uh, kettlebells in particular appeal to the martial arts uh, population for a lot of different reasons. One of them is because if you look at uh, standard weight training, you get most of your... Um, you most of your movements come from bodybuilding, powerlifting, and Olympic lifting. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, they're all great, but look at what their goals are. Bodybuilders have a, uh, a perfect physique. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, have symmetry in, in your physique. They're not necessarily connecting the muscles together. Right. Powerlifting is, is great for developing your strength for your mm -hmm. bench, your deadlift, and your squat. Right. Yes, there is some sport transfer, mm -hmm. but it's developed for those lifts, just that as Olympic limited, lifting. Right? Right. Right. Especially for weight class athletes, you can gain a lot of strength per pound mm -hmm. without having to get the muscle huge. Okay. Whereas in uh, standard weightlifting, bodybuilding, powerlifting, you gain strength by muscle hypotrophy, okay. which is the breaking down the muscle fiber and scarring and making it larger, sure. thus putting on more mass. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can get more mass with kettlebell, right. but it's you don't need to put on that mass to okay. gain strength benefits, so you're getting an overall body workout, and every movement is athletic. Okay. You're not just saying, oh, my, today's my chest day. No, that, that, that stuff's thrown out the right. window. What we're looking at is we're doing an overall body with certain areas that have a higher level of focus. All right, so for Peluca.com fans who are new to kettlebells, Talk to us a little bit about the history. Is it a, a, it's a Russian, Russian, uh, yes. a Russian background to kettlebells, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and really have become incredibly popular. Oh, yeah. The crossover to uh, gyms, right, uh, is is obvious. You see mm -hmm. kettlebells now everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is not using everyone, them. right, but using them, but using them properly. Yes. Because I, I'm imagining like any weight training, there's a right way and a wrong way. Yes. And they say uh, practice makes perfect, but no, no, perfect practice makes perfect. Absolutely, that's, absolutely. That's, that's something I believe in because you could do something inc incorrectly a thousand times, yeah. and guess what? You've actually done yourself more harm than good. So yes. talk to me about kettlebells sure. and what people should look for. What is a real kettlebell instructor? Uh, what type of certification should, okay. should, a, should a, uh, a person look for in their kettlebell instructor? Well, well, first of all, when you're looking at kettlebell training in particular, uh, the kettlebell uh, training is very ballistic. Uh, with ballistic, you can great, make great gains, but you can also injure yourself. Okay. So that's why you have to have the proper instruction. And as far as I'm concerned, there's one organization mm -hmm. around, and that's the RKC. It's considered the gold standard in okay. training. Okay, RKC, uh, which is? That's the Russian Kettlebell Challenge. Okay. That was uh, founded by... Uh, Pavel Tatsalain. Okay. He brought it over from Russia, mm -hmm. and uh, John Duquesne. Okay. And John Duquesne runs the uh, the business end of it. All right. With, through uh, Dragon Door. Okay. And so. Um, I'm familiar with Dragon Door, yeah, another sponsor at uh, Peluca.com, and yes. it's going to be in our in our in our comic book. Yes. So you should look for someone who's RKC, RKC certified, certified. Yes. Uh, as your instructor to make sure you do. it. Dragondoor.com. Okay. Dragondoor.com will point you, you plug in your uh, zip code, your zip code boom, and they, they come up with all the different guys within X amount of radius when you plug in. Um, the other thing is that they also do the um, certifications and workshops mm -hmm. from there as well. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a shameless plug here. Okay. Um, yes, I'm available for travel, and I, I travel around. I, I, I'm actually an RKC team leader, so right. I, I... I tried to get in contact with you when you were in Minnesota, <laughs> yes, right, doing Minnesota, some kettlebell yes, training. Yes, or that could be in Philadelphia, sure. or uh, Virginia, or wherever okay. it is, wherever they need me, I go, because I'm part of Pavel's uh, training team. Okay. Uh, in addition, if you want to just do it from your house, uh, go to kettlebellking.com, because I just recently came out with an 18 video set okay. with a 37 page electronic manual okay. that you can download for only 49 bucks. Okay. There's 12 workouts in there and we go over in detail 22 different kettlebell movements as well as some Perfect. Uh, good freehand movements. Yeah. Phil, good luck. Have, have a good trip to Brazil. Best of luck of course to yes. Peluca.com and AzadWatch.com's Mike Masenzio uh, and we're very very happy uh, to spend some time with you and get some very wonderful insights as far as both training, conditioning, not just for top level MMA athletes, but for everybody out there. Phil, thanks. As Thank you, always. Joe. All Pleasure. Right. Great. Good luck. Good.